ride, the line was unusual in that it progressed directly from steam to electric traction. A fascinating film taken in the summer of 1966 records the last year of steam traction covering the entire route from Guruk to Glasgow. Guruk became established in the 19th century as a popular seaside and residential destination, with the Caledonian Railway recognizing Guruk's potential and opening a new station and pier in 1889. Viewed from Tower Hill, the Bay Hotel, built in the 1930s, dominates the Guruk waterfront in this 1966 scene. Apart from the change of ownership, the station façade and entrance had remained virtually unaltered since its opening and belied the size and scale of the station. Filming again from Tower Hill, a train is seen leaving Fort Matilda station and skirting Guruk Bay on the final mile of its journey from Glasgow before entering the Guruk terminus. A ferry from Danoon prepares to dock at Guruk Pier, with the ferry passengers facing an undemanding short walk into the station. Guruk's run-down platforms appear particularly untidy, as work progressed on installing catenary supports for the forthcoming electrification of the route to Glasgow. The station and its facilities possessed one of the most attractive locations in Scotland with the coach sidings and locomotive turntable looking over the west bank of Guruk Bay. In the last years of steam operation, tank engines, together with LMS and standard class 5s, handled most of the services. Although some ex-LMS tank locos were employed, BR-built versions predominated, with Greenock Ladyburn and Glasgow's Corker Hill depots supplying the motive power. It was the practice to turn even the tank locomotives, but despite its intensive use, Guruk's turntable remained hand-operated until the end of steam.
Servicing completed, the locomotive returns to the station, ready for the journey back to Glasgow. It's the sister engine, number 80122, of Corker Hill Depot, that continues the story as it backs onto its rake of suburban stock in July 1966. Now operated by Caledonian McBrain, the ferry service disgorges its passengers, including American sailors from the naval base at Holy Loch on the north side of the Clyde Estuary. The train fills quickly, and with a whistle and a wave of the green flag, gets underway at the start of its 66-minute journey to Glasgow Central Station. To the east of Gurukh Bay is the 400-foot-high Lyle Hill, which offered a superb vantage point to view the train's departure. sharply around the bay, graphically illustrated in this second view from the heights of Lyle Hill as the line enters the western suburbs of Greenock. Four minutes after leaving Gurukh, the train slows for Fort Matilda Station, named after a nearby wartime army barracks. From Fort Matilda, the line enters Greenock West after passing through Scotland's longest tunnel with a length of one mile, 340 yards. From the beginning of the 19th century, Greenock gained increasing importance as a shipbuilding centre in addition to being the birthplace of James Watt, the discoverer of steam power. exits Greenock West through a deep cutting and a short tunnel before entering Greenock's principal station, Greenock Central. delicate removal of a packing case allows station staff and a passenger to load two prams, a task that would prove difficult on some modern coaching stock. Given the right of way, 80122 passes the semaphore starting signal, which, like the steam engine, will be swept away upon full electrification of the route. Occupying the bay platform are parcels vans, another long-vanished part of the railway scene. Dyke is the next station, 
after which the line passes the almost deserted Greenock Ladyburn Depot, destined to close in December 1966. During 1940 and 41, Glasgow was subjected to bombing raids, and Ladyburn Shed was virtually destroyed in May 1941 with normal operation not resuming until the 1950s. Passing Boxton Station, dockyard installations line the riverbank, including the Greenock Dry Dock that was used to overhaul the Cunard Queens. Stone-built tenements line the approaches to Port Glasgow Station, six miles and twenty minutes after leaving Gourock. This was also the junction for the line to Inverkip and Weems Bay. In the heart of the shipbuilding belt, the town gained its name by being the port that served the city of Glasgow before the upper reaches of the Clyde were dredged and deepened. The world's first seagoing paddle steamer, the Comet, was launched here in 1812, establishing the town's shipbuilding reputation. Leaving the station, the line passed through the rapidly contracting industrial heartland of Port Glasgow. in the foreground were part of the massive reconstruction of the A8 trunk road, which swept away much of the area's derelict land. Rail sidings since removed were also used in this road reconstruction program to bring in heavy bridge components. particularly when viewed from the railway, the design of these flats in the eastern suburbs of Port Glasgow leaves a great deal to be desired. A second view of the train leaving Port Glasgow features the now demolished Gurukh Rope Works building as a backdrop as the standard four tank accelerates towards Glasgow. A short distance after passing Wood Hall, the line was sandwiched between the A8 and the riverbank before it recrossed the A8 on the approaches to Langbank. The village of Langbank boasted only a small wayside station, but the station master still cut an impressive figure as 80122 coasts to a halt. As the Glasgow-bound train leaves, a westbound excursion roars past.
This was one of the fastest stretches on the line. And in the 1970s, mainline class 82s were tested on the route and reportedly reached 100 miles per hour through Langbank. Looking to the north bank of the Clyde, Dumbarton Rock and Castle are prominent before the railway crosses the A8 once more. A series of buoys in the centre of the river indicate the navigable channel, which required constant dredging, and through which ocean-going ships have to pass. The appearance of Bishopton Tunnel signal box indicated the approximate halfway point on the journey, and shortly after the line enters the damp confines of Bishopton Tunnel. Twelve miles from Glasgow, the line reaches Bishopton, a typical Caledonian railway building with its stepped gable. Although largely rural, a nearby Royal Ordnance factory was the main employer in the area. After Bishopton, the line passed the perimeter of Glasgow Airport nine miles from the city centre. Coasting down the slight gradient at Bog Head, the next major station to be reached is Paisley's Gilmore Street, where the coastal route from Ayr and Stranra joins the Gurukh Line. A large industrial town, Paisley's fortunes were based originally on textiles, the most famous company being Coates, the thread manufacturer. Bags on the platform awaits the train, another reminder of an everyday occurrence that has disappeared from the railway scene. With the mailbag safely aboard, Gilmore Street is left behind as the train accelerates towards Arkleston Junction. The junction served the Renfrew Wharf to Glasgow St. Enoch passenger service, which ceased in 1967, with freight traffic lingering on for several years afterwards, before complete closure of the branch in 1972. Passing Hillington West, the line crosses the Industrial Estate Access Road before reaching Hillington East Station. The industrial estate had grown rapidly in the 1950s and 60s, with both stations being opened by British Railways to serve the estate and adjacent residential areas. After passing Hillington East, a high-speed run follows through Cardonnell Station and the Ibrox area of Glasgow, home to Glasgow Rangers FC, with a brief signal check bringing the run to a temporary halt. Passing Glasgow Central Power Box, the elevated line overlooks Commerce Street on its approach to Central Station, where blue electric units, green rail cars and steam locomotives rub shoulders. Viewed from the George V Bridge, 80122, 
crosses the River Clyde on the 700 foot long Clyde Bridge as it approaches Glasgow Central Station and Journey's End. One hour and eight minutes after leaving Gourock. Glasgow and Sao 